Well, at least that was the last one. Hello? Anyone home? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? Another crazy night here. For some people, it's morning time. So, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and good luck to everyone out there. This is Colin River Show, as usual. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we're probably going to be later on on the, um, I think it's Bandot video, whatever, you know, the forbidden name. And we're going to have Leo Zagami, as you, many of you know by now. Uh, we have Leo Leon Zagami that uses the internal documents of the Illuminati to reveal confidential and top secret events. And remember, his books. Uh, contend that the presence of numerous Illuminati brotherhoods and secret societies, just as those inside the most prestigious U.S. universities, such as Yale, Harvard, are there to catch us and have always been guides to the occult. From the Order Templi Orientis, the auto infiltration of Freemasonry and the real Priory of Zion, and all of these, we're going to have Lilian Zagami, that's also nobility in Europe, you know, remember his dad was that man, uh, teaching uh, and teacher of uh, Carl Jung's uh, uh, postulates, and also her mother, that was uh, also very, very awesome, and we're going to talk about all these things, and today the kingdom of Kazaria, that, that real kingdom, a straight major uh, artery of commerce between Eastern Europe and Southwestern Asia, Kazaria, as some people uh, call it, became one of the foremost trading empires of the early medieval world. Huh? Uh, he, he was very relevant also, uh, commanding the western marches of the Silk Road and playing a key commercial role at the crossroad between China and the Middle East and the Kievan Rus. So uh, some people, they place it in, in, in Ukraine around 650, you know, the um, 7th century and the 10th century and one of the largest states of medieval Eurasia and dominated the region of what is now Ukraine and steps of, of uh, the lands approaching the Euro River, uh, you know, all that Russia stuff, uh, Donas and Crimea and whatever, you know. And for that purpose, also because there's a lot of controversy here that the real Jews come from there, you know, and other uh, mumbo jumbo uh, based on the 13 tribes, um, too, by. Um, I don't remember the name, but I think it was Kassler, Arthur Kassler, or somebody like that. And the Askenazi Jews and Leo Zagami is going to clarify all this stuff. Also, don't forget to buy his book because the, the, the latest book is right there. He's been very successful. Leo is just right there, right behind enemy lines. Uh, Leo, how are you doing? Very well. Thank you for having me on. And today we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic as there is a lot of misconceptions around this kingdom of Kazaria, we hope to clear them today with uh, our show. So welcome, everybody. This is, uh, of course, the Colony River Show, meeting together with the Leo Zigami Show in this uh, incredible Sunday here uh, in America. You are based at the moment where? In Portugal? I'm still in Portugal with the king of uh, England. He's just right behind me. I don't know if he's, uh, he's called meat or he's still there somewhere in the coffin. <laughs> but but it's just, like they say in America, the nail in the coffin and cut to the chase, cut to the chase. That's very Californian, you know, that came from California because the chases were too long right down there in Los Angeles. And then it started going crazy. So people, they say, cut to the chase. I want to watch the chase on TV. Yeah. So we, we, we asked Leo today, we're going to have 60 minutes and then uh, uh, he's going to explain because Leo, what is all this mumbo jumbo about the Kazarians being this world conspiracy so suddenly they adopt people from ufos or something from kazaria and you know the zionists are all from kazaria and everyone is from fucking kazaria now they're all asking as the jews but it, 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 it's so very happy and i read that that uh, most of the people they, they they talk some turkish language that later on when well, Supposedly. like I said, it's a, it's a very complex subject. I hope I can clear it, especially because it is unfortunately used for a whole lot of anti-Semitism. The Kingdom of Kazaria lasted yeah, right. uh, more or less five centuries. It lasted uh, five centuries. It was basically active between the uh, 7th to the 11th century, uh, more or less. And then, uh, of course, there is... Uh, 
uh, a lot of talk about the Kazanians also as the ancestors of the Ashkenazi Jews. But uh, all this today, as you will see, is uh, uh, it, it's actually um, disinformation. There's a lot of disinformation, and I'm quite surprised that even some uh, some Jews have helped uh, within the spread of this of this uh, disinformation. Um, like recently, for example, I was uh, uh, giving an interview with a gentleman called Adam King, uh, uh, who is a practicing Jew, and uh, he is basically uh, also uh, spreading the lie of the Khazarian Jews. So today we need to definitely clear up this matter about this kingdom, which uh, uh, embraced to some extent Judaism and uh, was not Jewish. So. It mm -hmm. We, we lost the connection there for a minute. I don't know. He went off. We're talking about Gazaria not being Judaism. He touched some button or something. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come back with um, there there he is. He's back. They hit it up with waves. The, his sorry, telephone. Yes. Yeah, so we, we just what, what? Already we have you, you, you started you get excited and then you, you you hit some button that was the wrong button okay. to Meloni to to Meloni or to to Klaus Schwab and okay. Klaus Schwab just just got you up with a new European law you know we have now a European law that yes. if you say something they don't like it's gonna be erased from the internet forever yeah but uh, let, let's go on with the with the Kasarians that you were saying that they were not actually Jewish no. The first time we really hear uh, something about the Kazarians uh, uh, was uh, uh, by a guy called Yehuda Alevi, who was, of course, Jewish, and he from wrote, Spain, uh, Sephardic. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, and he wrote, uh, described this uh, this king who basically uh, invited the representatives of the various uh, faith uh, group, including a Muslim imam, a Christian priest, and a rabbi, and eventually he, he, he kind of uh, uh, embraced the Jewish religion. But uh, uh, having said that, for many centuries, a lot of people thought this was just a tale or a legend, but it, it was actually a, a real thing. So the Kuzari is considered one of the most important works of Jewish apologetic and has been reprinted many times in several languages. And it offers basically the first insight in why they embrace uh, Judaism in this uh, far distant land, which was uh -huh. a little bit squashed uh, between the, the rise of the Muslims that they opposed very much. In fact, one good thing about the Khazarians that can be said is that thanks to them we we had uh, we, we have basically Eastern Europe clear of the Muslim faith because the Muslims were advancing and, uh, and the Khazarians uh, of course stopped them and and this actually in the end resulted with uh, the, the possibility of preserving Christianity because Khazarian uh, I mean the Khazarian kingdom really started his decline once uh, once you know the orthodox religion really established itself and, uh -huh. and of course at that point uh, um, the, 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 the Kazari kind of like there was a, a sort of diaspora and eventually they will integrate with other uh, with other populations but uh, there has always been uh, this uh, fixation regarding the fact uh, that they were actually they were the ones who were the originators of uh, a large part of the Jewish population. This is, of course, uh, the fake news that we're still trying to fight after all uh, these, uh, these years, especially the Khazar hypothesis of the Ashkenazi ancestry, um, which... Has like you're saying, they, they, excuse me, they, they, they joined a little bit, the Jews, they were pagan, but the Muslims, they were coming fast and, no, and okay, no, heavy. No, this, this was a population that uh, basically was practicing various religions. It was actually practicing exactly. shamanism. Shamanism was one of the... the like pagan religions. stuff, we say, yeah? Yes, uh, shamanism. And then at one point, uh, they simply decided... Uh, at least the, because it was a kingdom, so the royal family and all the aristocracy 
uh, uh -huh. involved with them decided to uh, embrace uh, the Jewish faith. And this uh, was done uh, though without being Jewish. So what they did was they embraced uh, all the various uh, Jewish uh, laws and, and of course uh, what happened after that? It but but they, were, they, were not, they were not fully Jews. As I, they were I, not Jews at all. They were not Jews at all. Because they didn't follow the Torah. Maybe some practices no, like no, 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 circumcision. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with this. They, okay. They were et you see, the, the thing is here we're talking about ethnicity. Ethnicity is not an hypothesis. It's not a, a, a religion. The Khazar uh, hypothesis of Ashkenazi ancestry, like I said, is a bit... Uh, of the problem that we will have to discuss today. But uh, basically, the medieval sources that uh, this hypothesis draws from is, uh, are known as the Khazar Correspondence, which was uh -huh, basically uh -huh. a set of documents that uh, date between the 1950s to the 1960s after Christ, and uh, uh, there are letters between a guy called Ashdai Ibn Shabrui, uh, who was foreign secretary to the Caliph of Cordoba and the representative of the Khazars, uh, who was a guy called Joseph Kagan. And Joseph the Kagan, correspondence yeah. uh, of these documents, uh, it gives us an account, of course, of the Khazar conversion to Judaism and its progress into subsequent generations of people who have embraced the Jewish faith um, until the fall of the Khazar Empire, which... Uh, uh, of course, so will last another couple of centuries, but starts to, let's say, the official fall of the Khazar Empire is dated uh, 969 after, after Christ. So the Khazar state was still military powerful and received tributes from several, uh, from several, of course, uh, uh, centuries and, 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 and tribes and stuff. And, and at one point, uh, uh, we have also some... Uh, um, how you say, some evidence of uh, this conversion, uh, especially uh, not so long ago, uh, there was a discovery in Crimea, which is a contested land, as you know, because a lot of, of what we will be discussing about the Khazars today comes from Ukraine, of course. And Crimea, which is, as you know, at the moment, a very contested land between uh, Ukraine and Russia, they found some coins uh, which uh, portrayed the symbols of Judaism, but on uh, one side also the symbols of uh, Turkish uh, nomadic tribes that eventually uh, became uh, the, 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 the people involved in this Khazarian kingdom. So mm -hmm. um, the Khazarians but were never Jews. They were Turkish nomadic tribes who at one point made simply a decision because they were a bit squashed between different powers and they decided to embrace for the control of, uh, I mean, of the religious system, the religious faith. However, a lot of people, uh, of course, converted even amongst the, the, the poorest, poorer classes, but not the entire population. And there was never an obligation to uh, to force them in, in, into, of course, I mean, Judaism has never been a religion that has forced its uh, uh, conversion. So uh, other people continued to, uh, with, their, uh, um, with their pagan beliefs, their shamanic beliefs. And now, one of the books which I suggest, a more recent edition uh, of this book actually is better because it's the third edition, the Jews of Khazaria, Kevin Allen Brock. Now, this book in particular gives us uh, a real understanding about a lot of the problems that we have uh, in, 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 in this uh, misconception. However, it gives us also all the genetic data that demonstrates that there was never, uh, after a careful study of the genetic data, uh, they saw that the modern Ashkenazi don't have any of the common uh, uh, DNA traces that we find in the uh, Khazarians. So, I mean, 
it's 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 uh, this whole thing of claiming that the Kazarians were in some way the ancestors of the Ashkenazi and of most of the Jewish population of Eastern Europe is false also because the Ashkenazi are a minority within Judaism. So, yeah, and, they, uh, and, they, and, and they talk, to reinforce that, they talk uh, Yiddish that has nothing to do with Turkish languages that the Kazarians yes, yes, spoke. Yes, uh, that, 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 that is a, that's a German thing, otherwise they would have some traces. And the other thing that you said that was very important, even the coins, they found the Star of David. That's too early for the Star of David because the Star of David was not adopted until the 19th century, if I remember well. And the Star of David, uh, that is the hexagon, was used by many tribes, even in, in Hinduism and, and, and in the East, you know, at that time, even the, right. the Ruskies, would, they used that. You would say that there was some, some, some traces of symbolism uh, uh, regarding the menorah, for example. However, 80% uh, of the Jews of the world, so uh, 12 to 13 million Jews, uh, descend from 400 families, more or less. And uh, uh, around the year 1000, I mean, when it comes down to the, the, the Ashkenazis in particular, we know that, of course, the, 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 we found uh, this uh, the Ashkenazi is mostly based in in in, uh, in in what is now Germany, for example, all that mm -hmm. area. Uh, then uh, we of course uh, will find them also in Poland, and in, in, in then in what is modern Ukraine. Um, but uh, having said this, the, uh, the 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 Khazars themselves, so like I said, were a population that simply embraced the. Uh, the Jewish religion, but there is a lot, of course, of controversy because a, a Jewish rabbi who was called Isaac Bayer Levinson, who uh, was born in 1788 and died in 1860, who was born in Ukraine, he launched this uh, um, this possible connection between uh, the Ashkenazi Jews and the Kazarians. Uh -huh. So he was the one who uh, started this uh, connection. Then we find also in the late 19th century another important author, researcher, Ernest Renan, and other scholars who speculated that the Ashkenazi Jews of Europe originated amongst the Turkish, uh, the Turkic refugees who had migrated, uh, Turkic, because not properly only from Turkey, uh, Turkey, but also from other areas like Turkmenistan, for example, who had migrated from the collapsed Kazarian Khanate uh, westwards into Europe. Now, uh, this whole conspiracy theory that is uh, surfacing now mainly comes from one author, though, which is a guy called Arthur Kester. Uh, Kester uh, wrote a book which was published in 1976 known as, uh, this book was entitled The 13th Tribe. Now, the 13th Tribe uh, picked up on the Khazarian theory, which had been floating around uh, Central Europe for quite some time. And uh, uh, Kester, this, this, this guy, I mean, he actually uh, was... Uh, a Hungarian-born author and journalist who had, uh, uh, by the way, joined uh, earlier on the Communist Party in Germany. Uh, then uh, in the, at the end of the 1930s, he became disillusioned with Stal Stalinism. He eventually moved to Great Britain. He will work for the British uh, Secret Service, for the British uh -huh. agents. And so he was not, uh, I mean, some people uh say that uh, uh, he in a way because uh, he was also partly maybe Jewish himself uh he, he he kind of like but he kind of wanted uh, in a way to launch this uh, this whole theory almost to want to help the, the Jews, but in reality create a whole uh, a whole uh, line of anti-Semitism. Because uh, um, what, what happened here is this. The Kazarian theory was spread mostly to favor the Palestinians and uh, favor the, 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 and the, with the... It, it, it gave 
a theory that the Palestinians could use also to their advantage because of course there was the you know Israel had been had been uh, recently Take, taken up yeah taken over the territory that that was not originally was a political reality yeah uh, uh, we from 19 uh, you know from the end of the 1940s uh, with the UN resolutions and its future of course uh, uh, was also uh, put uh, into question when when you say that uh, these Jews were not really Jews that have been ever living there but were actually Kazarians it kind of helped you understand it helped the it helped the Palestinian case to say that they shouldn't be there and and also the case that the 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 israel british heritage or origin of israel you know because some people some british you know like coming bemons and you know all I that mean, people the, 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 the thing is with kestler and with what he was trying to do it's a little bit weird because uh, i i've been talking with uh, some of my jewish friends about it and they told me that basically he was, you know, the fact that he was trying to prove that today Ashkenazi were descended from the Khazars, uh, uh, he thought that it would remove some way anti-Semitism. In reality, it helped anti-Semitism even more. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's, like, say, it's like saying, let's say, Libyans come from Italians, because some of them they speak Italian. But we know it's not true. I mean, we know that the troops were there, Italian troops, but Libyans don't come originally from Italians, of course. Sure, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Eritrea. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, now, there is a book, uh, uh, have the Kazaz, the uh, Turkish Empire on the steppes, uh, um, 7th to 11th century AD, because that's the period, uh, like we said, that the Khazar Empire um what was uh, was uh, was living and, and and was prospering very much it was actually a very powerful uh, uh, entity um and it in this book uh, there is pictures uh, of various uh, uh, things that seem to have a lot of jewish markings on various gear and on an helmet uh, there is actually a menorah mm -hmm. so there is not uh, the the Jewish Star of David, like you said, a more recent symbol, but the menorah is a much more ancient symbol that has been always used by the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is, uh, like I said, some other archaeological evidence that comes from uh, Crimea. But then uh, the, um, the various uh, theses that, uh, you know, that were pushing this notion uh, came uh, in, in various stages. Like I said, the whole, uh, the first guy was this rabbi, Isaac Bayer Levinson. Then later on, there was, uh, uh, like uh, we said, uh, uh, other people like Ernest Renan. And before, much before Arthur Kessler published The 13th Tribe in 1976, uh, there was also uh, Hugo von Kuschera, who uh, basically um, wrote uh, a book, uh, and he was particularly influential. This guy was uh, basically a uh, Austro-Hungaric uh, uh, diplomat and Orientalist. Uh, he was uh, born in 1847 and died in 1909. And in the last year of his life, he dedicated himself to the study of the Khazars. And a lot of his work has been, uh, I mean, he, he basically, he had experience with, uh, with various languages. He had been an Orientalist, he knew, and he had this, he was convinced of the origin of Eastern Jews from the Khazar people. So he wrote this book that was published after his death. And this book was basically portraying again this theory that the Ashkenazis somehow were descended from the Khazar. Then later on, there was an American, uh, and this happened before the, the book uh, which, uh, which we mentioned earlier, uh, which uh, is the 13 tribe by Arthur Kessler, that is rather recent, this was 1976. There was a guy called Maurice Fishberg. And uh, Maurice Fischberg uh, was actually also born in Ukraine. 
and in 1911 he uh, published a book about uh, the Jews studying to the race and, uh, and it was actually I think the, the exact title of this uh, of this book was uh, uh, just a second uh, I think that uh, I have it written somewhere is the Jews and uh, a study of race and environment and he was also somebody who uh, who tried to push this erroneous concept and uh, uh, that of course uh, the, the, there was uh, uh, some, somehow the Jews were originating uh, the majority of Jews from the Khazars now um the the this book that i showed you earlier is interesting uh, but there is also another book by the same author which is called the maternal genetic lineages of ashkenazi jews which uh, um, is of course done with the most modern focuses on the 129 material apple groups is focused basically on the most modern uh, approach that these historians now have basing themselves on automass of dna studies you know mm -hmm. that there is a lot of people give their dna uh, to some companies uh, this at times is a matter also of controversy uh, but uh, um, they they claim that uh, you know in this way they can have really a genealogical uh, uh, dna testing which is much more accurate and uh, with these uh, uh, studies you can really get to debunk a lot of lies so a few years ago in 2012 uh, there had been a study published by a an academic guy called Aaron et al uh, and he basically had published a paper entitled The Missing Link of Jewish European Ancestry, contrasting the Rhineland and Khazarian hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And he seemed to have been more like, he, 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 he was like, his findings uh, said that they supported the Khazarian hypothesis and portrayed the European Jewish, Jewish genome as a mosaic that included also them. But this was a study that was then debunked later on by Kevin Allen Brock, which uh, makes a much more in-depth study. And uh, um, when it comes uh, and here, I of course I need uh, maybe a pair of glasses because. And in the meantime, in the meantime, he's he's getting his glasses. I mean, uh, talking to rabbis for for many years and stuff. Jews actually are defined by the Torah, not by genetics. So um, you have no. a lot of Jews from, from Hinduism, you have a lot of Jews from, from Germany, you have Jews from America, and they don't have any, any traces that they are, you know, they're all going to be different. The same as Irish, the, if you get Irish, they, they, all they're going to say, all oh, Irish Catholic, of course, they, they are common because all Catholics, they have the same DNA. Of course, they're going to have the same DNA if they're from the same area. But, but Jews are defined by the Torah, so it's like, you know, they follow the Torah. Another thing that you no, Sam mentioned. Uh, yes. Okay, no, no, that is not at least my Your opinion. Of view. Uh, and it's in the sense that uh, the uh, yes, you can have, of course. I think that the most uh, uh, important. Uh, I mean, Jews are a glorious mix of uh, Israelite and local blood from diaspora lands. This is mm -hmm. a more, let's say, a more clear description. They are, uh, you know, uh, there is Jewish, uh, of course, uh, uh, DNA. I'm myself partly Ashkenazi Jew, so I can tell that. I mean, I did a DNA test and it came, comes up. It comes up, so it's, it's like clearly. When instead, the, when eventually, and here, uh, in this particular... Um, book he uh, says uh, historians have debated the question of a Khazar component in modern Ashkenazi Jewry for two centuries Rabbi Isaac Bayer Levinson was an early proponent of the hypothesis as we just said uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, 
that uh, he, he said, you know, that the Russian Jews came from the Volga River, Valley of Kazarian. In the 20th century, then, of course, we have also up to Kersel, which is talked about. But now that you have geneticists that are actually working on researching all this, uh, they found that the Ashkenazi are not genetically related at all closely to the Turkic speaking Chuvash and Tatar peoples of the Volga region, nor to North Caucasian peoples. Their studies sampled Adige, Balkans, Chechens, Kadrin, uh, Kumis, Legends, North Ossetians, Tabarasans. Uh, so this is a very in-depth study that is being done. And that's why we need to debunk the lies that you see that are continuously said. We, we can't continue to confuse people. Mm-hmm. So many times we need to debunk this uh, Kazarian nonsense. I think it's a very important uh, that, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, like, I mean, it's it's a lie that at times is used for anti-Semitism more than no, one. I, 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 I understand that. But yeah. but what I'm saying, for example, is with with for example uh, Henry a- Abrahamson, that also has a YouTube channel. You, you guys can check it there. I'm just following what some of the rabbis say about you know you can be Jewish if you choose to be Jewish. It has no. Uh, that is a uh, that is a religious choice. That is of something course. to do with the, with the, your identity as an Italian, as a Spain a Spanish, as an English, English, or, whatever you know. know. We are talking here about uh, a, uh, you know, a, because uh, you see, in uh, the year 922 after Christ, the Arabic writer Ahmed ibn Faldran was traveling uh, in the Kazarian kingdom and wrote his impression and experiences. He Mm -hmm. definitely confirmed that the king was Jewish, uh, but. uh, he still said that Jewish represented a minority in the kingdom. Now, most Khazarians are Muslims or Christians, he said. There uh, there was also evidence of very un-Jewish practices, such as, for example, the ritual murder of the king if he deemed to have decayed mentally, something that could have been, uh, that we could apply very easily also to Joe Biden. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, but, but we will need to bring back uh, these Kazarian rules. Uh, in any case, there is also evidence from various uh, customs that, uh, um, that there was a widespread conversion to Judaism. Um, and there is also uh, studies that uh, show that there was a lot of paganism still. And, and actually, in this book, there is a whole discussion regarding the uh, shamanic uh, uh, practices uh, here of the uh, Tengri shamanism within the Khazarian Empire. Mm-hmm. And what kind of practices the early Khazars routinely sought advice of a shaman or medicine man called the Kam in Turkic. A shaman will enter a trance-like state in an attempt to contact the invisible spirit world, to exorcise evil spirit under the earth's surface, and to win the protection of benevolent spirits. Shamans were considered to be both healers and predictors of future events. So they were very much also the Khazars into an elaborate assemblage of gods similar to that of Bulgars or other Turkic tribes. But, uh, like we said, at one point, uh, they, uh, they made a decision and they decided to, uh, at least uh, the, the, the guiding elite of the country, decided to convert to Judaism. At that point, uh, they, of course, also invited the, the Jews from around the world to join them. And for that reason, of course, some Jewish blood entered the, within the Khazarian Empire, for sure. Um, like like you have like you have Irish blood in northern Spain or in France or in yeah. some parts of Italy, even Liguria, you have some Rh negative that matches, for example, another northern Spanish tribe like the Basque or the Welsh or the Scottish. So there's always going to be some some DNA linkage because the Europeans we all made up of the same DNA pool, you know. So you can't really reject that. Even the Jews because they they are Sephardic. They they came originally. 
you know, from, from Spain? Well, I mean, the Jews are uh, not only Sephardic, those Sephardic, of course, constitute... Uh, uh, More than a Ashkenazi, of course. Ashkenazi yeah, is nothing. It's various, very small. You have various... Uh, you have Roman Jews, for example, which are very ancient. I mean, the Roman uh, Jewish uh, enclave is one of the oldest ones in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. In the world. So, uh, you... Now, the thing is this. The, the Khazar thesis uh, is crucial for those people who want to view the Jews are not descendants from ancient Israelites. And they claim that the many blonde, blue-eyed people among the Ashkenazi, in particular, um, can support uh, this claim. Now, like I said before, the Jewish... Yeah, well, blonde, blonde, I, I, didn't, I, didn't quite, uh, I didn't quite catch that. They they say the, this the thesis or whatever it is that you have blonde hair people Ashkenazi blonde hair people. Yes, you have, of course. But but they, they were Turkish, you know, Turkish people. They can no, be. No, but they're not. But that's what I'm saying. If they can be blonde, man. No, but that's why. Uh, I mean, look at him. No, but that's why the serious studies on the on 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 this whole topic have demonstrated that the Ashkenazi have nothing to do with the Khazars because the Khazars are Turk. So they are of course more dark. Okay. Yeah. Look, look, look at the look at the Khazars. They're like this painting here. Yeah. So they're gonna be like Greek or like you know uh, Southern Italian or yeah. Turkic people. You know, like even some Russian people. They're Turkic. That, that's why the Rus come from find Kiev. The, some descendants of the modern Khazars in in Hungary. In Hungary, at times you have dark people that are. Uh, not so Slavic looking, for example. You have the Khazars in Transylvania, you have the Khazars in Lithuania, you have the Khazars in Belarus. Uh, you have, of course, the Khazars, like I said earlier, uh, also you have the Khazars in Poland. Uh, and, and so you have the Khazars also in Ukraine, because the Khazars lived in Ukraine, beginning with the westward expansion of the Khazars, uh, empire, empire in, yeah. in, in what is uh, the, the Dnipro Valley uh, and by the middle of the 10th century a substantial community of Jews possibly party Khazarian lived in the city of Kiev but in Kiev you have also Jews that came that were real Jews uh, not that I'm saying that the Khazarians are not the real Jews but they are not ethnically Jews like, like you, 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 you mentioned some important thing here Kiev so Kiev yeah. was like a Jewish post in like Ukraine, Donbass, and Central Asia, but it was not like the people there were originally Jewish. That's what you're saying. It was uh, a post. First of all, we have very many different types of Jews that also of course. The, and also lived at the same time. You had the mountain Jews, uh, the so-called mountain Jews that are basically also said to be descendant uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, to, to the, from the Khazarians. This is, look, look uh, these are Khazars that they look a bit Asian. They're Turkic people. Now, there. if we go on the mountain Jews, for example, the mountain Jews look a bit Khazar. They look uh, Khazarian. They look uh, more. Uh, uh, the, 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 now, the, where are the mountain Jews based? The mountain Jews are based uh, in the, the, the eastern and northern Caucasus, mainly Azerbaijan. Uh, uh -huh. Part of what uh, you know, Chechenia, Ingustetia, Dagestan, and those people, uh, you know, in those countries, you have people who are pretty dark. The mountain Jews are descendants of Persian Jews from Iran, and uh, and, and some people have claimed that uh, they were in, uh, also descendants of the Khazarians, but uh, also that is a little bit. Uh, the mountain Jews are distinct, for example, from Georgian Jews or. Uh, which are also a little bit so when you go into all, all this search you know it's very complex it's not an easy thing guys because this is about defining the origins of these people and and and, and also the lies that are you know that are said uh, the Khazarian empire of course was close was uh, bordering with the very famous and influential Byzantine empire of yeah, course. we got it there. Yeah, but but and, what what I, I, I want to ask you too also, I know it's controversial, is that okay? Just let's imagine for one second, 
let's just imagine horror for one second. The Ashkenazi Jews come from there, from Kazaria. That no, they, they, this... they don't come from Kazaria. I tell you. Before. But, but, but let, let, let's just imagine. Let's just imagine, Leo. Demonstrate that the Ashkenazi oh. origin ge genetic studies have, have demonstrated that a close relationship exists between Eastern European Ashkenazi Jews and many of the people who inhabit the Middle East, of course. Of course, of course. They, but, 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 no but let, let's get let's get on the on the on this hypothesis that I didn't know that you are actually proving that is wrong. Yeah. And, and, and let's just assume, okay, assume just for a moment the Khazars are the Ashkenazi Jews. That... I, I think that the best thing I can say here is this. Okay. So but, just... but, but, uh, let, let me fire the question. This is important. So th they're saying that Rothschild and Rockefeller and all these people, they are Ashkenazi because they come from the Khazarians. So what? Well, the Khazarians, they were beasts? They were evil? Or what is the fucking point? Uh, you, you understand what I'm asking you? First, their thesis, like I said, uh, serves only the purpose to say that these people are not from Israel, and so basically they have no business in getting back and building back Israel after mm -hmm. the Second World War. This is their, this is the fundamentally why they are spreading this lie. Everything mm -hmm. else is propaganda. It's basically, uh, if you, you know, they say these people descend from the Khazars, they were never really Israelites. They were just converts to Judaism, and then they spread their power and tentacles, and they're taking over the world. This is what they're claiming. Is first of all, their claim comes from the big lie that the Ashkenazi Jews descend from from Kazar. So here we have to go back to the DNA studies because here then we can really uh, demystify and debunk this whole thing. Um, now, uh, in 2013, a definitive study done on the genetics by professional genetic teams mm -hmm. uh, included comprehensive analysis of autosomal DNA, which is a way, for those who don't know, and we have to explain this a second, because then uh, people can understand why we are sure of our assertions. And, and you know, automosal, automosal DNA studies is a term used in genetic genealogy to describe DNA, which is inherited from the autosomal chromosomes. An autosome is any of the numbered chromes that are opposed to the sex chromosomes. Humans have 22 pairs of, uh, of autosomes uh, and one pair of sex chromosomes, the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. Autosomes are numbered roughly in relation to their sizes. Now, uh, it's, it's thanks to this careful study that they have arrived to this conclusion. So. Uh, if Ashkenazim had been descendants from converts, converted Khazars or Alans, listen to the, this, it's very important. The, the, the Alans are the, the tribe from the north of Germany. Yeah. Okay, listen to it. From the important. Rhineland, yeah, the Rhineland. They would have had noteworthy, identical by descent, sharing some of these populations. In reality, they have only extremely low identical by descent sharing from ancestors who live in very ancient times, well before the Khazarian era. As we know now, uh, uniparental DNA, which is uh, uh, Y-DNA and MT-DNA, that's in short, does not show any ashkenazi Khazar connection either. Uh, hypothesis that the Ashkenazi var var varieties, uh, varieties of the wild DNA apple groups, because the apple group also is very important to define your origin, mm -hmm. uh, is fundamental, I would say. Uh, Q and R uh, and RI, uh, uh, I could have, uh, the Khazar basically have, this whole thing has been invalidated, which leaves no wild DNA apple groups in the Ashkenazi, uh, Ashkenazi population, that could have come directly from Central or East Asia via male Khazarian ancestors. So you see, here is completely the bank, this whole thing. Once we go into the, into the genetics of it, eh, there can't be any supposition, any theory, any, uh, any speculation. Then mm -hmm. it's science that, uh, you know, through a methodology that is very accurate, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, will, will have some problems if we were not uh, relating completely to science. But in this case, it's very important to relate to science. Why? Because uh, the, the Ashkenazim don't 
do not descend from any of the lineages of Khazar men, whether royal, noble, or commoner. Mm -hmm. The Ashkenazi uh, MT DNA, upper groups of East Asian origin, do not support a narrative of Khazarian heritage. The most likely explanation for their existence among Ashkenazi is medieval intermarriage between traveling Ashkenazi merchant and Chinese women. Yeah, because in all that, these, that's why they, they have slit eyes, they're Turkish. But but, but what, what I'm saying have the fact that they were on the Silk Road. Let's remember this, like you said right at the beginning. No, we are talking about the Silk Road here, you know. This empire was positioned in a very at that time very important strategic route. Yes, exactly. So it doesn't seem to me they actually Jewish. I mean, for what I read and I learned, even the DNA test, even though it's a small, very portion of, of sample because it has to be a bit greater. But but the 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 the, the big bosses of uh, you know Jewish Torah and even rabbis, they say that the the main families that they they made up the DNA genetic pool of. Some of the Jews, not all of them, of, of course, because in the end it's a religion, they are the Levites, and they're from the fathers, not the mothers. So that's why they were looking for that Y, you know, chromosome. No, you but, understand? But still, the Turkey, that's very interesting. But the Turkic Khazaria element is not present in the Ashkenazi. No, no, it's not, it's not. So but, if but, you don't have the Turkish, the Turkic, uh, sorry, because at time I say Turkish, but it's Turkic. Uh, the Turkic element uh, within uh, the, the fact that, that mm -hmm. it's not present in the modern Ashkenazi population, that is the, the answer that you've been searching for. So, uh, accusing, and then there is this whole anti Semitic conspiracy that says the Ashkenazi, they, they are the Ashkenazi, they are the evil ones, and all this BS. Okay, uh, you know, there is, of course, the Sabbatian Frankist. As you know, I wrote extensively about it. I wrote extensively about it in volume uh, nine. I wrote about it in volume seven. I wrote about it in volume four uh, of my confessions. My books are very much detailed regarding this whole uh, heresy within the Jewish world and what it represented. Mm -hmm. But uh, often it, it, it's actually uh, thanks to this, uh, this um, uh, whole... Uh, uh, Kazarian disinformation that uh, we never talk about the real problem, which is really the heretics within Judaism, which are a little bit like the heretics within Christianity or within mm. uh, or within Catholicism, because I don't consider uh, the Jesuits as being uh, proper Catholics or proper Christians. Now, Ukrainian, uh, the Ukraine had a significant. Uh, a Jewish community that uh, dates back to the Middle Ages. Uh, and the history of Ukrainian Jewry has been very difficult. But in my book, I describe how the identity of the Ukrainians has been artificially constructed within the last two centuries. So in reality, the Ukrainian Jewry was simply part of Russian Jewry. In fact, uh, mm -hmm. often... Uh, they are referred as, uh, as as Russians. Like, for example, when I mentioned the guy who actually put through for the first time this theory, Isaac Bear Levinson, uh, this guy who basically um, for the first time started to make uh, this connection between the Ashkenazi and the Kazarian. Well, he has been called the Mendelssohn of Russia, not the Mendelssohn of Ukraine, simply because Ukraine didn't exist at the time. It was an artificial construct, and I explained very well in my latest book how this artificial construct came together. Having uh, said that, when, 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 when it comes instead to, to Ukraine, of course Ukraine has influenced very much uh, the Jewish world. Um, and, 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 you know, of course the borders of Ukraine shifted following the collapse of the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union. And, and, but the astonishing number of Ukrainian Jews who are part of, uh, of, of our culture, uh, but also of Jewish culture. No? We have, for example, Baal Shem Tov, who was the founder of Hasidic Judaism, who comes uh, from Ukraine. And mm -hmm. he 
was, uh, uh, you know, is, is part of uh, an orthodox spiritual revivalist movement that in a way wanted to oppose what the Sabbateans had started, that heresy that was kind of really mining the very foundations of Judaism. So uh, Baal Shem Tov, who was born in 1698 in Okopi, Ukraine, uh, uh, and whose name means literally master of the good name and often abbreviated uh, to best, is definitely a very important figure uh, mm -hmm. that uh, I don't see as a negative figure. Mm, uh, then we have uh, uh, Golda Meir, who ascended to international prominence when she was elected prime minister of Israel in 1969. Mm -hmm. And she was born in Kiev, in Ukraine, in 1898. Mayor was the fourth woman in the world to serve a head of, of state. And, 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 and of course, she was born in Ukraine. So, yeah, that, and what, when was, was he born in Ukraine again? He was born because you are Golda Meir. She was born in 1898. 1898, that was Russia. That was the Tsarist Russia. Well, because it, from no, 1789 no, or 90, no, no. That, that was Russia. Ukraine didn't exist. No, no. Let's say that Ukraine started to exist within that period, because in that period you had the first the Ruthenian idea that transformed itself in Ukrainian, because first there wasn't even the name Ukrainian; it was called Ruthenian. Ruthenian, yeah. Okay, but, but the very foundations of what will then later on become the Soviet Republic of Ukraine, with that united and then with the whole of the Soviet Union. Well, those first, let's say, elements uh, came in that period. Yes, we can say that technically, uh, to some extent, it was Russia. Uh, Kiev uh, was... Uh, With the Tsarist was Russia, and then Lenin made the mistake of, of having, you know, these, these Baltic republics and give him self-determination. Uh, that wasn't Marxist, because Marx does not approve uh, self-independence of was, little was republics. Ready. No, but there was already in Ukraine a tendency because uh, this I explain in my book. There was a number of secret societies that developed, uh, inspired by the Illuminati, who in the period uh, around 1848, when there was the so-called Spring Revolutions, not exactly. the ones in the Middle East, but the exactly. ones that, that happened in Europe, all over Europe, were uh, piloted by the Illuminati who wanted to simply destabilize the monarchies of Europe and they wanted uh, in some way to uh, construct uh, the, the Europe of the future that was uh, oh, that's uh, true, yeah. destroying all the monarchies means also destroying all the religions and of course pushing a more progressive agenda. Uh, having said that, the, 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 the first secret societies that, uh, that we see evolving in Ukraine, they are the ones that are connected, of course, with the Freemasonry, Freemasonry that arrived in Ukraine through Poland and through Russia, of course. But uh, uh, as soon as uh, Freemasonry started to spread, there was also these other secret societies, which I talk about in Volume 9, which uh, were instead spreading the idea of an independent Ukraine that uh, will be leading uh, the rest of the Slavic nations uh, in a federation in which the Russians were, will be simply uh, equals to them. So that, that, was, that, that, that's, that was the problem. The demise of Russia, of the Soviet Union, was having too many independent republics doing fucking fuck all. That's why when they wanted you know, divide or break up some kind of country or federation, let's say, in, the, in this case, Europe, it becomes, in the end, a failure, you know? I think uh, that uh, the, 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 the thing is that both uh, Poland and uh, Prussia, uh, Germany, basically, they yeah. hated very much Russia. Uh, at the same time, the Illuminati were founded, of course, uh, in, in Germany, and they were pushing also... For Ukraine to create its own identity, so they could then uh, push this uh, part of uh, uh, Russia away from Russia into their hands, which is something that is still happening nowadays with NATO trying to uh, push uh, the whole of Ukraine uh, uh, 
uh, into their hands uh, or the Russians that uh, have uh, opposed all this and since 2014 have occupied Donbass. Uh, they have, of course, uh, reclaimed the Crimea and they are now uh, waging war because uh, they see that uh, uh, Ukraine was simply a place called uh, Ukraine because uh, Ukraine means borderland, mm -hmm. it's a borderland. No, so uh, in in chapter two, as you can, uh, you are showing now to our viewers uh, of my uh, latest book for the first time. I show all these various uh, secret societies, uh, way too many to mention uh, that I were. Uh, the protagonist uh, of creating uh, this country. Now, Ukraine at one point, uh, just prior to the uh, Russian Revolution, was trying to build uh, an Ukrainian identity. And at times also with the help of the Catholic Church, which wanted to mine the interest of the Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. So at one point they created even uh, an organization that was known as the Ruthenian Supreme Council uh, after the spring revolutions and they were tried to create the uh, increasing this Ukrainian identity and then before the Soviet Union uh, there was the creation of the people's uh, kind of Republic of Ukraine the, the actual basis of what Ukraine is today was laid uh, three or four years prior to the uh, to the establishment of the Soviet Union in 1922. From that moment onwards, of course, Ukraine became simply the Soviet uh, Republic of Ukraine, a member founder of uh, the United uh, Soviet Union. So of the Soviet Union, which was uh, a system of countries, uh, of, of republics who had embraced the communist ideal. And, and, and of course, at that point, uh, they started to reject uh, the, 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 the orthodox faith that then was re-embraced once the Soviet Union uh, was dismantled. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, the orthodox faith also represents uh, in the eyes of most of the Ukrainian elite that wants to... Um, and you're showing it there, they basically the persecution of the Orthodox Church in Ukraine today is uh, the result of this anti-Russian sentiment. And I think that is rather clear that the Pope, who just uh, was visited the other day by General Mili, I call him General Mili Vanilli. Whatever, eh? He's a fake, yeah. Uh, he went to talk with the Pope, which I mean is a, in itself a very unusual move. You know, why do you have to go and talk with the Pope about the war in Ukraine and about the future of the war in Ukraine? But let's not forget that the Catholic Church has a lot to do with this war because one of the orders, Catholic orders, which is Catholic but also Masonic, which is the International Order of Saint Sanislao or the Order of Saint Sanislai, which mm -hmm. is two separate orders now, but they used to be one order. Um, well, this order, which was founded originally in Poland, uh, then uh, started to spread in the 90s uh, in Ukraine after the fall of the Soviet Union and it became the leading Masonic order in Ukraine uh, and Zelensky is part of it and the International Order of St. Stanislao and the various related bodies of St. Stanislao, they are uh, connected to both the Jesuits and Freemasonry, and they are uh, used to, uh, to, 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 to drive and control this new elite uh, that, sh that forms in Ukraine, and that then persecutes uh, the, the Orthodox Church. Now, the Orthodox Church in, 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 in Ukraine has been completely uh, persecuted for political reasons and none other than political reasons. In fact, what you're showing also, the fact that uh, the faithful surround their representatives, but then after that they get kicked out of their churches, of their monasteries, simply because they still depend from Russia. They want to also ch change the traditions of the uh, Ukrainian people. They moved the the celebration of Christmas from the traditional Orthodox Christmas to the, the, the celebration we have here in the West on the 25th of December. 
So that is a big change. There is a big war within Ukraine uh, when it comes down to the fate. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, of course, the Sabbatian Frankist and those heretical Jews are to blame. But there is no such thing as the Kazarians actually involved at the moment in... So K Kazarians uh, didn't disappear and turn into uh, Ashkenazis from, from night to day? That's no. the... Because we have to be wrapping up here. Uh, Leo says that there is some genetic uh, uh, tracing that takes you back to, to uh, Jerusalem. From the Jews, obviously, and you know they probably have some right to claim some some whereabouts there, and uh, um, we kind of 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 seen everything. You explained it very well. We we well, gave. I, a, I mean, it's it's, it's not. Uh, I mean, it's. Not it's a complex. It's a complex. I know it's a complex thing because it involves a lot of different things from different geographical parts. Yeah. And be, because of the diaspora, you know, it can be anywhere. You know, I, I can come up with something saying like, oh. I'm I'm from Liguria because somebody just reached uh, England, you know, London in somewhere in the past, and blah blah blah. Now, and all people from now, London, they're bad. About five point two percent of the Ashkenazi men possess the Y chromosome lineages within the QP thirty six Apo group, which is a very specific one, which is found in Central and Northern Asia as well as Amerindians but much more rarely amongst Europeans and Middle Easterners. Now, mm -hmm. some researchers thought it was possible that this could have been inherited from the Khazar, uh, Khazars, but this idea is no longer viable. Ashkenazis uh, belong to the Q Apo groups that were later precisely identified as QY220 and QYP1035, and, and, and it's like... Uh, you know, these are very specific uh, branches, like the Turkic people have a specific uh, Halo group yeah. that is not reflected in the in the Ashkenazi, and so uh, the, the, this uh, and this whole thing, it's, it's it's simply the researchers have speculated very much. For two centuries about the, the, the Ashkenazis Khazarian hypothesis, uh, uh, but in the end, uh, it didn't uh, it didn't really uh, it didn't really come together. Most Ashkenazi uh, and Ashkenazi Levites, uh, which descend and, and originate from uh, from, uh, for example, the Middle East, likely Persia, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Proportion of Sephardim along with the Ashkenazi branch also that have this kind of descendant, but the Kazarian element is being debunked now. So I think uh, it's very important to understand. We we, we have debunked this. Eh? We have debunked this. There, there, there's no there's no proof that you know even you know from the other part that for sure you know suddenly the 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 Khazars disappear or the Magyars or Attila or whoever was there and then became the the Ashkenazis from the Rhineland, you know, I mean... No, it, it, seems, more, no, it seems like the Ashkenazi gradually got absorbed into, in the populations uh, of, of, of the land where they were living in. Uh, it they, 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 they doesn't seem like they went around the world to conquer anything. No, really. no, no, no. And, and even the cultural symbols that we see from the Khazars, they are symbols that the Hindus and other people use. Like the Star of David, that is very recent and appear in in. Oh, no, in, the Kazars, in uh, like I said, adopted some Jewish symbols, especially the royal. But they, they, but they couldn't adopt Leo in the 11th century, the Star of David, no, because it no, didn't no, exist. That is another thing. And the, and the, the menorah. Like I said, the menorah though was present. Uh, but, but the menorah is also a symbol of of Egypt, like Amen Ra, menorah Amen Ra. I mean, you you have no, it also. I mean, that is a little bit more. I mean, that's I know. Right? But I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing here some esoteric knowledge, you know. <laughs> I know you like it, and just be positive. And also, you know, you have the trident of Poseidon. The trident of Poseidon is like a menorah, like the light of Poseidon. I mean, many things, you know, that also influence the Jews. So the Jews, also no genetic evidence that the mountain Jews descend from the Khazars. That's another thing that today. Uh, uh, Leo and I, we're not from the mountain. We're from the city. We're city. We're city cosmopolitan people. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know and that, that uh, the, 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 we have uh, today at least for all our viewers explained very well that the uh, the migration of German Jews into Eastern Europe, for example, the English speaking Ashkenazi Jews from Germany and Austria don't have anything with the Khazar. There, there is not there is no an Ashkenazi conspiracy coming from Khazar, from the kingdom of Khazaria people. There is though, there is though a uh, Sabbatian Frankist conspiracy, which by the way, the Jacob Frank used to, Jacob Frank, who was the guy who claimed, and like I explained in my books, of course who claimed he was the reincarnation of Sabbatai Zevi, who was himself living in Turkey. Uh, but most of the Jews who were living in Turkey were uh, Sephardic, were not Ashkenazi, yeah, by the way. And, and, yeah, and but you, you, you can say also that... The, the the that ja with Jacob Frank, of course, then it becomes an Ashkenazi thing, you know. And, 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 but in reality, it's not about... Uh, uh, is about the whole of Judaism that gets infiltrated by this Sabbatian Frankist. And then exactly. that conspiracy is a much more present conspiracy that we need to look into and that I invite all our viewers to, to check out. Because to check it out. Uh, the people like Henry Kissinger is a Sabbatian Frankist and this is being recognized by uh, the, uh, Rabbi Anterman who, who even did a ritual to excommunicate him. And, and, and these are things that have been fought for the last two centuries within Judaism. This heresy, actually, for over two and a half centuries, this, this, uh, this heresy has been present, and the Frankists need to be fought, but uh, they, 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 nobody gives them, uh, you know, any... Uh, everybody's focusing on the Kazarian, because the Kazarian... It fits Kazarian, they're out there, man. They're in the fucking wilderness. Forget about Kazarians, people. We're not interested in Kazarians. Uh, we, we're interested in that Leo is the reincarnation of Rodolfo Valentino, and I'm the reincarnation of uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Look at me. I'm so fucking handsome, and Leo is so fucking handsome. We're always positive. There is no uh, conspiracy of the Zionists uh, from Kazaria coming down uh, from spaceships and abducting uh, no, but there is, for example, Leo and myself. Zionist that, for example, also from the Sabbateans and the Jesuits, yeah? The, the Sabbatean and the Jesuits uh, and, 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 and all the work that we are trying to do here is to debunk also this Hafter Kessler. Uh, some people say he might have wanted to help the Jews by spreading uh, this... Uh, uh, lies within present in his book the 13 tribe but he actually harmed a lot of people by doing this and and today we see it with all the hate that we you know we, 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 when we go in all these alternative sites the hate that they are uh, pushing against Jews every day accusing Kazarians Kazar you are not really Israel you are and, the, and the, the Jews they just go around in, in spaceships people uh, abducting people with 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 yes. alien probes, man, yes. it's like it's the Jews always. It's the Jews always. And now the you know I, I'm gonna get all the hit here. I'm gonna get all the hit. It's like the, the Vatican goes around, you know, abducting people. The Pope Francis gets into a spaceship and goes abducting Rodolfo Valentino, and he cha he clone it. He, he cloned Biden too. I mean, come on, people. Let's be just freaking honest here. Let's just see all the information, all the evidence. Let's listen to Leo and le and let's be positive because if you're positive, you know, we're trying to be honest and have some sense of humor and satire too that is part of our culture and we just have to laugh at, 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 at the evil people because remember the uh, um, the good guys they always winning but they never win and the, the bad guys they always they always losing but they, ne they, they, they never lose uh, so there's a balance and rodolfo valentino and brad pitt here we actually keep the balance so don't worry about that yeah, leo I hope so. I, I, I thank you. I, I thank you a lot, bro. I thank you a lot, bro, for your 60 minutes we have here. Uh, I salute you, Captain Captain Zagami. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Go and don't forget to buy the, the freaking book. This freaking book, you have to have it in your collection. After the nine tomes, yeah. you will have a master and a PhD. Show it there. Show it there. Show the freaking book, book man. It can be read without reading all the others. So you start from volume nine. Uh, my latest book, uh, it's Seven Steps to the Secrets of the New World Disorder from Transhumanism, Immortality to Gnostic Jesus, UFOs and Insect Witchcraft, everything you need to know in this New World Disorder. God bless is you. The, 
And God bless you. God bless Leo and everyone there in California. I know my family is still there. Don't don't get anything in your fucking arm. Don't get anything anywhere, man. Don't get a chip in your head. And, and for, forget about people abducting, you know, uh, other people with freaking. We have more important things to to worry about. Leo Zagami, right there. Confession of the Illuminati. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna next strike time, back. Next time, Napoleon, which has been a very important figure. Napoleon discussing napoleon with colin rivas did napoleon exist was neapoleon he had three sisters and he had also a mother called leto or leticia it's very interesting all these subject there are some authors they they negate the uh, napoleon uh, hypothesis and we're going to check also the chinese we have to go after the chinese the chinese the Mao Zedong and kissinger because you talk about kissinger and this is very important the kissinger thing Absolutely. and the chinese and Absolutely. and the and the lip tarts because the lip tarts they they're trying to copy the chinese and no, be like fucking the robots yeah the most incredible thing is that uh, today republicans still view positively nixon when uh, if it wasn't for nixon and kissinger probably china would still uh, be living uh, a very different kind of life and they will definitely not be the number one economic power in the world soon to be so i mean we let it happen here and there is some secrets that need to be revealed regarding that so thank you for tuning in speak to you thank soon. you guys thank you and and register there go to leozagami.com also and colonrivers.tv bye leo and this is the colon rivers show thank you everyone for listening the kingdom of kazaria with leo zagami good night good luck i'm colon rivers you're not <laughs> The Great Kingdom of Kazakhstan.